Hello everybody and welcome to part 2 of the 280 country streak on a diverse world. This time we're going to be going through countries 101 through 190. If you missed the first 100 countries, check out part 1. There's going to be a link in the description and in the top right corner. So without any further ado, let's jump into this. Again, I'm going to be walking through my thought process for these 90 countries and explaining why chat and I chose the countries that we did. So let's get into this. For location number one, we had Meta, we had bars on the car, plus rifts in the sky, which indicates that we are going to be in Senegal. In round number 102, we had long white lines on the side of the road. Those are found in Norway. Sweden has similar dashed lines, but theirs are shorter, so the longer lines indicate in Norway. Uh, with a black car here and a very flat landscape, sun in the north as well as Spanish on that side, uh, everything was pointing to this being Argentina, uh, especially with those kinds of signs that we had as well. Number 104, this one I needed chat's help for. I was not sure what was happening here. We had a central yellow line, as well as a small antenna on the car, and a very interesting pine forest here in the hills. Uh, so I wasn't too sure what this was going to be. Uh, however, as chat suggested, this might have been Mexico. Mexico does have central yellow lines quite a lot on their roads, uh, but this pine forest was a landscape I hadn't really seen in Mexico. Uh, however, I do believe this ended up being somewhere close to Mexico City, uh, so sort of in the center of the country country in the mountains. And in round 105, we have winter coverage here with sort of stepladder looking electricity poles. Uh, with that two things combined, that indicates that we're going to be in Hungary. Uh, again, Romania and Poland have similar poles around sometimes, uh, but Romania's are painted white at the bottom, and Hungary just has tons and tons of winter coverage. Moving into round 106, here we have lots of bollards all around the intersection here. That is a thing that Russia does a lot with their intersections. Uh, we also have these sort of landscape and older looking cars as well, in addition to Cyrillic script, so everything was pointing to Russia for this location. Next one up, we had a Massachusetts license plate on the car, as well as that white sign, which is exclusive to Massachusetts. So there we go, that's 107 in the US. And round 108, this one I wasn't too sure about. We had a sort of Mediterranean looking landscape uh, with architecture that reminded me of somewhere like Spain, Portugal, Italy, uh, but I wasn't too sure. Based on the electricity pools that I had seen and chat's advice, I was thinking maybe this is gonna be Spain. I was looking at Italy first, uh, but those electricity pools, which I will show in a second here, uh, indicated that we were gonna be in Spain. So that one there in the center of screen has a sort of stepladder design, uh, which is seen in Spain and Portugal, but the one on the left, the more wireframe design, that one I believe is exclusive to Spain, uh, with that arch at the top as well. Uh, I'm not too sure on that, but the poles seem to be Spanish, the landscape certainly checked out as well, so we decided to go for Spain. Round 109 here, we had again similar stepladder pole, however the language here was Polish as well as the road markings, they reminded me of Poland, so I clicked there, just wanted to check on some more signs and things, and the language was certainly Polish. And round 110, we had a white Google car, sun in the north, poles, and Spanish language, everything here showed that we would be in Chile. Uh, a lot of times in Chile, you can see a lot of the car, so if you can see a ton of the white car, and the sun's in the north, and you've got Spanish language, you're going to be in Chile. Round 111 here, we had Generation 4 coverage plus Spanish, so the only two countries that have that in Latin America are Argentina and Mexico, so combined with the signs that we had, the license plates and everything, uh, we were going to be in Mexico. Next one up, this time we appeared to be in Tunisia based on that road sign. Uh, that design is used in uh, Tunisia, also the sort of landscape architecture that we had here as well. Oftentimes in Tunisia we've got a green follow car, not in this location, but uh, a lot of times in Tunisia you'll see a sort of like navy or olive green uh, following car. In this location it's Gen 4 again, it sort of reminded me of Malaysia or Indonesia. Uh, based on a lot of the banners and flags and things we had, they seem to be red and white, which are of course the colors of the Indonesian flag. Round 114, we had very green mountains and a white Google car. This kind of landscape is very distinct for Osutu. To tell it apart from Eswatini, Eswatini usually has a lot more trees around, uh, generally speaking. Uh, so that's a good way to tell them apart. 
Round 115, we had lots of white road markings, sun in the north, uh, a blue sign on that overpass as well. So I was starting to think this might be Chile. I wasn't too sure. Uh, the language there at the bus stop was Spanish, so that helped me to uh, confirm that Chile was the right idea. Uh, so that is what I went for in the end. I believe somebody in chat also mentioned that those bus stops are a Chilean design. Uh, not too sure about that, but definitely worked for this location. And hopping into round 116, we had North American looking cars and license plates. However, the street signs there seemed to be more Canadian than American. Uh, and given that we were in sort of dry looking mountains, I figured we were going to be in British Columbia. Uh, we definitely had English language as well. And so in the south, so all good ways to tell it apart from other similar looking countries. Uh, but yeah, basically just those signs uh, gave it away for me that we would be in Canada instead of the US. Next round up, we had white road markings driving on the left and these kinds of trees, very reminiscent of Australia. We had quite a few Australia locations in episode 1 as well, plus those bollards there on the left uh, are Australian. In this location, we have a very flat landscape, sun in the north, a couple of palm trees, uh, this kind of architecture as well. Everything seemed to be pointing toward Argentina for this one. Next one up, those yellow dashed lines on the side of the road made me think Ireland at first glance. Uh, however, we had the Bank of New Zealand there, which of course is going to put us in New Zealand instead. Uh, this is also Gen 4 coverage, driving on the left as well. Uh, we also have a New Zealand style phone number there. And round 120, we are somewhere in Eastern Europe. We had Romanian language there on that sign. Uh, Romania also has that pole there with the white paint at the bottom. Again, similar looking to Hungary, however the white paint sets it apart from Hungary most of the time. Next round up, we have Gen 4 plus Spanish again. So as I said, the only countries in Latin America with Spanish and Gen 4 are Mexico and Argentina. So based on the sort of landscape, I figured this probably is not going to be Argentina. I believe we also had Mexican electricity poles, the sort of hexagonal shape as well. Next one up, we have Carmeta, indicating that we're going to be in Guatemala, the next country over. Uh, a good way to tell Guatemala and Mexico together is that they both use alto on their stop signs, compared to other Latin American places, which use pare. In this location, we had an electricity pole reminding me of Spain or Portugal. I wasn't too sure about this personally, but thankfully I had chat to help me. They confirmed that we were in Portugal. They also had that car, which is a Portuguese license plate. Uh, Portugal has EU-style plates, but they also have a yellow stripe on the right side, in addition to the blue on the left. Here we are driving on the left side of the road with that giveaway sign uh, written in red instead of black. Uh, we are going to be in New Zealand. I did not know this trick, but chat told me that New Zealand uses red for their giveaway signs. Uh, I knew that there was some sort of giveaway sign trick to differentiating the two, uh, but it is red text used that is for New Zealand. Uh, Australia also has different car meta, they've got the longer antenna. And round 125, here we have a white car with Spanish, it's sort of tropical looking landscape, lots of tuk-tuks around here. Uh, as I mentioned in the first episode, I believe, Peru has a good amount of tuk-tuks compared to other countries in Latin America, which is a decent way to tell it apart from other places. Uh, Peru doesn't have too much tropical coverage, uh, but this location seems to be fairly standard for how tropical Peru looks. Uh, that electricity pole as well is of the Peruvian variety, uh, I believe it is anyway. There's a closer look at it, uh, but yeah, this is tropical Peru. Moving on to round 126, we are on a bridge crossing over some sort of river. That building reminded me of European architecture, sort of south or eastern architecture. Uh, it was very flat here, we had lots of water nearby as well. Uh, now, I wasn't too sure, I was thinking this could have been Italy, that was what that building reminded me of. However, that house there did not look Italian at all, uh, sort of the wrong architectural style. That seemed more southeastern Europe. Uh, now, we didn't have any car meta in this location, uh, and Serbia is a country that does not usually have car meta, uh, especially in a European setting, so we were starting to think this could be Serbia based on architecture, landscape, lack of car meta. So in the end, we went for Serbia. Next round here, we have Generation 4 coverage. 
We are driving on the right side of the road, and we also have a .ar domain again. So Argentina does have Gen 4. There isn't too much Gen 4 in Argentina uh, relative to places like Mexico or Brazil, but there is a good amount. And of course, .ar is Argentina's country code as well. We also have the sun in the north, and also this sort of shrubby looking landscape too. Round number 128, we had, again, a short antenna on the car, uh, sort of Latin American looking architecture and things. Sun was in the south for this one, though, so that was likely going to rule out anywhere in South America. That electricity pole, again, is sort of hexagonal shaped, which is the kind you get in Mexico. According to chat as well, that sort of square pole you see in more southern locations in Mexico as well. For this location, it's Gen 4 once again, however, the signs and architecture and everything reminded me a lot of the US. We also had an American street sign there, uh, the style with speed limit and then the number, that's an American sign. Always a surefire way to get the US. Uh, here the license plate seemed like Idaho, so I went for Boise, and it was pretty close to Boise. And round 130, uh, we were somewhere in Europe here, looked like the Balkans. This is Generation 4 coverage again, which rules out a good chunk of the Balkans. Uh, I believe it's only Greece and Bulgaria that have Gen 4 at this point. Uh, coming soon, Croatia will have Gen 4, I believe. Uh, but right now, it's just Greece and Bulgaria. Uh, so chat was telling me that we should be in Greece. That makes sense with that blue sign as well. Uh, personally, I wasn't too sure, but within the scope of Balkan Europe, uh, Greece certainly makes sense here, given the landscape and that signage. So we are one third of the way through the 90 countries for this video. Moving on to round 131. Here we had electricity poles, which are of South Korea's variety. They've got that sort of barbershop style. Uh, we also had South Korean language. Here we've got a 905 area code, English language, with a central single yellow line and a roundabout coming up. So the landscape here looks sort of like Canada or the US. However, Canada is the country that uses single yellow lines uh, a lot. US has basically none of those. Uh, 905, I believe, is an area code somewhere in Ontario. Um, but that's combined with the single yellow line uh, indicated that we were going to be in Canada. For this location, we had car meta. We have a snorkel, or a snorkel-looking thing. That's what we call it in the community on the car. Uh, Kenya has two varieties of those. That smaller one with a black car, and then a larger snorkel on the right side with a silver car. In this location, it's very snowy. Checking out the license plates, they seemed like Arizona license plates. So the only place I could really think it could be was Flagstaff. Uh, I went for the full send, and it was Flagstaff. Pretty happy with that one. Round 135, we had Turkish signs with Turkish language and the blue color. Uh, those are the color of Turkey's road signs. On to the next seed here, we had a black car once again uh, with a white signpost here. However, the electricity poles were of the Argentinian variety, so I believe I mentioned in episode 1, Argentina can have signs with a white post, uh, so it is usually an Uruguayan thing if you see that. However, the electricity poles here are Argentina's variety, uh, and the landscape is a little bit off for Uruguay, as far as I can tell. Uh, but this one was a little bit of a tricky one. We had to uh, go over our options here for a good amount of time, but in the end, we did settle on Argentina. Next round, we are somewhere in Europe, based on the architecture. It feels like Eastern or Southeastern Europe. Taking a look at that language there, it seemed as though we might be in Romania, uh, but I wasn't too sure. And then we also had the Romanian flag in the distance there, confirming my suspicions. Next round up, again we have car meta here, we have tape on the side of the car, so if you've got tape on the front right bar of the Google car, you're going to be in Ghana. Next round here we have some Spanish, the stop sign there was Alto, and it also says Chiapas, which is a Mexican state as well, uh, but again Alto is the stop sign used in Mexico and Guatemala, great trick to identify those countries. Here, this is Gen 4 coverage, we had Scandinavian looking architecture, uh, yellow speed limit signs differentiate that from Norway. Uh, Norway does not have yellow, but Sweden and Finland do. However, the fact that this is Gen 4 indicates that we are going to be in Sweden as opposed to Finland. Finland does not yet have full Generation 4 coverage. I believe as of right now, there's just a trekker in Helsinki, so no Gen 4 in Finland yet. 
On to round 141, here we have long yellow dashed lines in the middle of the road. That is a Norwegian thing that you will see. Round 142, uh, here we had Gen 4 coverage as well. Uh, there was a palm tree in the distance. Uh, language there is Greek, as again I said, Greece and Bulgaria, uh, and I guess if you count Turkey as well. Those are the only countries in uh, the Balkan area that currently have Gen 4. Round 143, here we had North American looking architecture and poles. The license plate on that car seemed like either Saskatchewan or Manitoba. I believe we went for Saskatchewan. Uh, they have green license plates and that it was there. Round 144, this is again Australia. We have Australian bollards, Generation 2 coverage, uh, and that sort of landscape. Here we have yellow dashed lines, which are found in Ireland. Great, simple way to identify that country. And so with that, we are halfway through the 90 countries for this episode of The Streak. Moving on to the next one, we are once again in Australia. We have those bollards with the red at the top. Uh, they're geared up for the left side of the road since, of course, Australia drives on the left. And again, those trees very, very distinctly Australian. Round 147 here. Uh, we're driving on the right. And at this point, I wasn't too sure what this would be. The Korean really took me by surprise. I was not expecting this to be uh, South Korea. Uh, but the language does not lie here. Uh, but yeah, that is Korean language. Korea does drive on the right compared to places like Japan, so that's a good way to tell it apart if you're not sure. Round 148, here the language seemed vaguely Spanish or Portuguese. It turned out to be Portuguese with that yellow strip on the right side of the license plates again. Uh, that is a thing for Portugal. Round 149, here we have Cyrillic script and a very distinct car meta. That Google car is found in Mongolia. There are a few varieties of car in Mongolia, but they're all very distinct, uh, combined with the very uh, cold-looking landscape of the deserts there. Uh, here we had a concrete road plus some bollards, which seem to be of the Ecuador variety. Ecuador is a country that uses co um, concrete roads quite a lot. And so with that game, we've made it to 150, pretty big milestone here. Uh, this time we have architecture again looking quite North American. Uh, this seems pretty far north though, so I believe we went for Canada. Uh, again, somewhere in the Prairie Provinces. That time it was Manitoba. Around 152, this time we've got electricity poles which are Taiwanese. Uh, they're similar to South Korea, except it goes all the way to the bottom with that barbershop design. Here, once again, we are in Australia. We've got those bollards, we got the trees. And round 154, uh, this time we've got some Turkish language on that sign. Uh, Turkish is distinguishable uh, with their overuse of U's. Uh, they've also got lots of umlaut looking things on some of their characters as well. Uh, once you get a feel for how the language looks, uh, it's pretty hard to uh, miss it. With this location, we have yellow outside lines and a white car. That is reminiscent of things you get in Eswatini or South Africa. I believe this location was just South Africa, but this va vaguely looks more like Eswatini. Uh, however, this is South Africa, I believe. Um, I think it was the road signs that set it apart from actually being Eswatini, uh, but I do think it was close. And yeah, as you can see, they're not too far away from Eswatini at all, sort of in that eastern part of the country, which gets all very green and hilly like that. So moving into the next set of games here for round 156, We've got Gen 4 coverage, plus language indicating either Indonesia or Malaysia. Uh, again, we have that sticker on the pole. You find that in Malaysia uh, on the peninsular side. Gen 4 is also only found on the peninsula. Here we have South African cities marked on the sign, as well as Gen 2 coverage, differentiating it from most of Africa. Round 158, black Google car. Sort of a deserty landscape with mountains as well. Uh, this indicates that we are going to be in Argentina. Round 158, we've got Gen 4 coverage here once again. Uh, that sign on the bridge has some place names which seem pretty uh, New Zealand. At first I thought it was California. Uh, California has similar bridge signs uh, like that, but this is definitely not California. I realized that soon after noticing those place names. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of reminiscent of the Maori language uh, in New Zealand. Round 159, actually 160, the counter is a little bit off at this point. Uh, here we are in Japan, driving on the left with those uh, road shields and language as well. 
Uh, I guessed in the wrong part of Japan. I thought Totori was in the north for some reason. It is not. It is in the south. <laughs> but it's still Japan, and that is what counts for Country Streak. So we're two-thirds of the way through this part of the episode. Uh, we've got here very red soil uh, driving on the right, white Google car, sun in the north. Uh, those poles are also of the Brazilian variety, and that road is so distinct for Brazil. That kind of road is almost always going to be Brazil. Here we have a Bangladesh Google car plus language. Round 163, we got a white car, sun in the north. Uh, with this kind of landscape, I was thinking Bolivia here. Uh, the pole was not of a sort of black and white stripey kind, so Bolivia seemed to make sense as well. I'm not sure if that one that we saw is Bolivian specific or not, uh, but this kind of landscape plus a white car definitely suggests Bolivia more so than Peru. Also, those road lines give it away to not be Chile. Chile usually has all white road lines. Uh, if they have yellow in the center, it's usually in very uh, far south locations or in snowy places in the mountains. For round 164, we once again have Brazilian electricity poles, uh, quite distinct. And again, that red soil, such a Brazilian thing. And round 165, we've got car meta here once again. Bars on the car without the black carbon fiber inlay plus Spanish equals Guatemala. Uh, the other place in the Latin American world with bars is Dominican Republic. However, theirs have a black carbon fiber inlay. On to round 166 here. Again, we've got a white car. Black backs of signs are a Brazilian thing, so... Uh, that combined with the car, and again, you can see that sort of red-looking soil all around us here in Brazil. Uh, such a Brazilian thing to see. Round 167, uh, I believe the counter is slightly off once again, uh, but here we have red soil. The language there is Thai, uh, as well as those electricity poles, that sort of square variety with the holes in them. That is a very Thai pole. Uh, but yeah, again, another part of the world, Thai and Cambodia, uh, they both got very red soils here, but the language in Poles, different from Brazil, of course. <laughs> on to the next round here. Here we've got short dashed lines on the side of the road, which, as I mentioned, are found in Sweden. Good way to tell it apart from Norway. Uh, Finland does not use dashed lines, which is another good way to tell it apart, but they are all three similar looking countries uh, to certain respects. Uh, and here, of course, the Scandinavian architecture, those red buildings with white trim, very, very much so a Scandinavian thing, especially in Sweden. Next round, we have white road lines plus Polish bollards and language here. Uh, quite distinct, that language, as well as those bollards too. Uh, can't go wrong with a nice Polish bollard. And for round 170, we are dropped into a Southeast Asian looking place. We've got that Camaro script and the Angkor beer ad, as well as those electricity poles indicating that we are going to be in Cambodia. So just 20 countries left to go for this episode. Uh, here we have an American speed limit sign once again. And we were in Wyoming there, kind of just plonked it down based on landscape, thankfully it was there. Here we've got Gen 4 coverage, we've got a central yellow line, and that blue sign in the distance is a Brazilian road kilometer marker. Uh, you see that a lot in Brazil, pretty good way to identify the country as well. Round 173, we've got a black Google car, very mountainous landscape, uh, reminding me a lot of the Andes. I believe the sun is in the north here, it should be, uh, so everything was pointing to this being Peru. Round 174, we had car meta here. Uh, the Google car there has sort of a France-colored design look on its blur. Uh, that is a thing you see in Sri Lanka. Uh, along with those bollards, I think those are Sri Lankan. They should be. Not sure if they're the common ones. Uh, also the electricity pulls, but car meta, a good way to get Sri Lanka sometimes. Uh, last round for this game, for 175, we have Gen 2 driving on the left with that kind of sign. We are going to be in South Africa. Uh, South Africa has a sort of road design where there's three lines in the middle, two solid lines on the outside, and then the dashed in the middle for those three. Uh, that is a very South African thing. Also, the only country in Africa to use Generation 2 cameras. So we got just 15 more locations. Here, once again, we've got car meta. It's the bars with Spanish, but the bars don't have the black inlay, so we're in Guatemala. Round 177, driving on the right here. 
this time, however, we've got the Colombian cross on the back of the signs. Uh, Colombia uses that sort of cross design to hold up its signs. Uh, they use them in all different kinds of shapes. Rectangles, diamonds, circles, uh, you name it, there's going to be a cross on the back. Uh, we also, of course, have Spanish driving on the right. Uh, so everything points to Colombia here. Next round, once again, we've got that French-looking Google Car Blur that you get in Sri Lanka. We also have the script of Sri Lanka as well. That's a good way to identify it. Very circular-looking, uh, oval-flowing script as well. Round 179, driving on the right with a conveniently placed sign welcoming us to Laurel, Nebraska, which is of course a state in the United States. Wasn't sure where Laurel was, I decided to have a quick look for it, but I could not find it in time, so we just went for Nebraska and got Country 179 done. On to round 180 here, we've got again the script that you find in Cambodia. Uh, I believe we also had a flag somewhere, maybe not. Uh, but there was also an ad for the uh, Angkor beer, or Cambodia beer. Again, huge, huge deal in Cambodia. You see those signs all over the place. Uh, a great way to identify the country as well. Uh, in comparison to Thailand, Cambodia also drives on the right, so if you're ever not sure between the two, check your driving side. That's a surefire way to get them as well. And we got just 10 more countries now to go for this attempt. 180 is actually uh, my previous PB on stream for Country Streaks, so we were pretty happy to make it this far. Uh, here we weren't sure if it was Canada or US, but we had the convenient US flag, and we were definitely rightfully confused as we were only a few miles from the border there in Maine. Uh, next round up looked like the UK. We got the yellow back plates, white front plates, uh, very distinct British architecture as well. Round 183, we had a very conveniently placed bus mentioning Ecuador. Now, of course, the logical idea would be to just go for Ecuador right away here, but we wanted to be sure because we were getting close to taking third place for the world record. Uh, I believe it was 223 or something. So we were getting up there. We didn't want to mess this up um, on a potentially very baity location, but it certainly looked like Ecuador here, and the bus mentioning Ecuador was very, very convincing for us to guess there as well. Round 184 brought us some Gen 2 coverage. Uh, it's sort of winter or maybe early spring here. Uh, lots of hedgerows and again rolling green hills. As I mentioned in the first episode, uh, that is a very UK thing. Again, we wanted to take our time here to make sure we didn't confuse this with Ireland or something like that. Uh, but everything seemed to be pretty British, so in the end, we settled on the UK and went for it. And round 185, here we've got Gen 2 coverage, uh, plus those very distinct South African road signs. Yellow outside lines as well, that's something you see in South Africa all the time. And with that, that is round 185. So we've got just five more rounds for this video. Here we have low cam with visible car meta and Japanese language, so we are in Japan. Round 187, we are driving on the left side of the road. Uh, we've also got these bollards, which indicate that we are going to be in Australia. Round 188, we've got Brazilian-style electricity poles. Uh, a lot of times in Brazil, the bottom of the poles are painted white, which is a good way to see them. Uh, round 189, looks like we're going to be in Brazil once again, based on the Google car. Kind of road and road markings, the pole once again, uh, and also that sandy red soil. You see it all over the place. And with that, we move on to round 190. Here we are driving on the right side of the road. It's Gen 4 coverage here. Um, based on the language and the polls, I believe we are going to be in Portugal here once again. Uh, throughout this stream, I was slowly learning what Portuguese polls and Spanish polls looked like. Uh, I think I have got a feel for it now. Uh, but this round was Portugal once again. And that brings us country number 190 to round out this part of our 280 country streak. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the 280 country streak. Thanks for watching. As always, make sure to leave a like down below and check out part one if you missed that. Uh, part three will be coming soon next week. We're going to go over the final 90 countries, bringing us up to 280. But until then, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.